How in the heck are you guys doing? It is that time. Time to pick the giveaway winners. And we are going to do it a little bit differently this time. That way you don't have to deal with me just sitting here talking to you, telling you who won. We are going to space out the winners throughout the bass fishing video you guys are going to see here soon. Met a new friend. Also went out with Marquette Adventures. If you want to check him out, the link to his channel is down below in the description. Great guy, great friend. And he is even now the new event director for Hunters for Life. So we have a whole bunch, a whole bunch, a whole bunch of giveaway winners. I think we're giving away like like 10 prizes or something like that. Believe it or not, we, we do answer to people. We have a board of directors, so we have to clear things by them to be able to do them. But we got it clear to do another two bonus giveaways before our big giveaway at uh, 2,000 subscribers where we have a whole bunch of awesome, awesome prizes. So we, this, is just, this is just our way of giving back to you guys for supporting us. You know, as a as a nonprofit, obviously we are not able to do what we do without uh, without the support of the community, which is all of you guys. So thank you so much, so much for helping our channel grow, and uh, thank just thanks for your support. So without any further ado, here is the video. Stay tuned. The giveaway winners are going to be listed somewhere either in this this area of the screen. Or, or this area of the screen. Everything is opposite with the camera, so it, it'll be somewhere in this vicinity. Thank you all. Just keep in mind, all of the giveaway winners are chosen at random, so if you are a giveaway winner, comment on this video down in the comment selection. Leave either an Instagram or a Snapchat, and if you don't have one of those, maybe a Facebook, but I would recommend not putting you, you know, your, shipping, your shipping information in, uh, in the comment section below privacy purposes and all that kind of stuff. So just drop a social media where we can uh, where we can message you and we will get to you, find out, you know, what size, what size shirt you wear, if you want a hat, you know, shipping address, all that kind of good stuff. Without any further ado, thank you all for your support and here is the video. We are departing Marquette about 39 minutes later than expected. Not that we're pointing any fingers, but uh Rather windy as per usual, so I, I do not be complaining in every video. We're just going to deal with the wind. Got a buddy to meet up with who uh, who knows a thing or two about bass fishing. We're going to teach him a thing or two about bass fishing. No, not really. Hopefully, we're going to put the beat down on uh, put the beat down on some large mouse and not get blown off the lake. That's the plan at least. Made it down, new lake, bass lake. Took a little hour drive to get down here, getting everything ready. It is uh, rather windy, not as windy as expected. I don't see white caps, but then again, I don't see that well. I don't think there's white caps out there. Go find a, a nice calm shoreline upwind and uh, go from there. All aboard, boys. Two and a half pounder. Not too shabby. Why would you do that? Oh, come on. You just got a sender. <laughs> that old man jump. <laughs> so like second cast up under this dock on my on my punch rig had a had a little nibble. So now we're trying to get the wacky under there. <laughs> Trying to get the wacky under there, get them, uh, get them confused. It felt like it was at least every bit of four pounds, possibly even five. Pretty good sign for the uh, first dock we flipped. How can they resist the wacky worm? It's funny because in my last video I said that I had too much pride to fish with a wacky worm, and here I am fishing with one. Oh, my bass senses are tingling that there's a giant under there. Stand corrected. <coughs> These guys must not be friends if they both need their own raft. <laughs> Gotta knock first, make sure they're home. I think I'm gonna buy a session. Oh, you bugger! Oh man, 
they're stacked up there. Or those are just timbers. It could be tim oh, there's a big timber trout down there. I had a nibble, I think. Mike's hooked up. First, first fish contact. Is it a big one? Oh, let's get the treble hooks out of the net real quick. We'll get, we'll get him in there. Oh, he's huge. Nice little Larry. I'll even take him off for you. Oh, the Gary Yamamoto. So we got him on. Not too shabby. Pretty good bait. Pretty old school. Mike's an old guy. I found one. Surfing, man. It's bigger than yours, Mike. I don't know. He might be the same one. <laughs> Second I cast it up next to that dock, he pounced on it. We're going to make it look like a, a Sanko Worms trying to chase your uh, Gary Yamamoto. That's our, that's our approach here. Good thing it wasn't supposed to be windy today. That's a nice one. Timber trout. Bass Lake Timber Trout. I saw that, how small that was. Yeah, I hit a fish right here too. That one was deep. Well, you guys just missed me uh, set the hook on about a six incher out in the deeps. We got fish under docks, we got fish on the breaks. Pretty decent, pretty decent lake. I'm kind of starting to, you know, wonder why it might be called Bass Lake. We'll let you know when we figure that one out. Oh yeah, buddy! Nice old timber trout. You know it's a bad day when you wake up at 6.30 and there's already 30 mile hour winds. I woke up to things blowing off of my nightstand. I hear there's actually a lot of a lot of freshwater crabs in here. One of the best lakes in the UP. That's what I've heard. I think I read that in a Field and Stream article. Oh, there it is. I'm in the juice, boys. Yep. Juicy! You couldn't see them, Mikey, because they're under the docks. I don't need a net. Nets are only for the six pounders. We both we both flip up to five. I would like my hook back there, sir. See you, buddy. Well, I'll we'll we'll go fish this next one before we move. It's not terribly windy yet. Now it's two, two to one to zero, boys. Huh? <laughs> colored ones, if you want to just. Oh wow, dude, that was a heck of a skip. And of course I'm snagged. What do you do when you snag on the boat on the other side of the dock? This one's gonna be interesting. <laughs> Let me go to a commercial break. Off to calmer water. Trolling motor just uh, just can't battle 30 to 40 mile an hour gusts, unfortunately. Next one I'm able to though. Mikey just lost about a nine pounder. So big it felt like a cinder block, he said. Crossing swords. <laughs> Hooked up on. Uh, oh man. 
That was that would at least every bit of 24 inches. You guys saw that, right? Yeah, I, I saw it. He was at least 10 pounds. At least. It kind of looked like a downed timber with the dorsal thing. I saw it. It was, it was that, that was, big. Honestly, with the silver. I think that one came all the way from Texas. With the silver on the belly, I thought that was your rainbow trout. How funny would that have been? I literally just said I've never caught a rainbow trout on a, on a St. Cohen. Was it really silver on the belly? I didn't even see it. It was really silver. It, was. it, was, it, it felt kind of like a rainbow trout. It would spit the hook a lot like a rainbow trout would. One thing we're known for here at uh, Hunters for Life is uh, snagging. But if you ever step on a hook on anything, it's not our hook because uh, we go out of our way to get them back. Tip for uh, tip for all you bass guys out there, don't leave hooks on docks. <laughs> unless dogs start barking. <laughs> Mikey, please fall in Ooh, for this. Big, big. No way. Then that was there was five. a six pounder underneath there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh. All right, so, let's... so that's what we get for snagging the dock. That was like a perfect parallel park there. I'm gonna push this off. This guy doesn't feel handy. Okay, we're coming to bet your dog. Hopefully you can't aim very good. I knew there was gonna be one under there. I gotta tie a wacky hook back on. Or we gotta learn how to skip a bait caster. Oh, we missed him. Big one. Probably six pounds. Caught a carpet down the needle. We made sure your carpet was on there, good. <laughs> well, I'm currently uh, stuck in this tree. They're both back there chasing a mondo that I just scared off this log when I ran into it. Determined to get this back. This gives a whole new definition to the term Widowmaker back here. Is that the branch or my bait that just landed over there, you think? Right. Was it? No, you're, uh, you're hanging from the tree. Am I? Yeah. Well, at least nobody will step on that one. Say, A-O, make it feel so free. Oh, whistle them in, Dixie. I should have tri trimmed that skirt before I did that, but oh well. So basically what I got here, guys, I got the bullet sinker. You can probably recognize that from our mystery tackle box unboxing bullet sinker with a skirt and we've got some wrecking craws in a beautiful color i didn't think i had any craws until i looked in my mystery tackle box tackle box baby bass oh the baby bass sanko might be a good one to throw bass are what's the word i'm looking for um cannibals cannibals that's what i'm looking for You could probably jump that far. Oh, it's got a white. That's a. Give it a shot. <laughs> You're gonna know when they hit that chatterbait, brother. Mike's first time fishing with a chatterbait. Did you put the trailer on it? Yeah, the one that came with it. No, nothing came with Did you buy it at Walmart? The trailer came with it, a blue one. Weed whacker mode. Now we're back in business, boys. I'm gonna try to stay away from the elevated timber trout. Mikey found one on the chatterbait. He's hitting a couple things too. Oh, that's the best way to release them. Why wear glasses? I love spiders. Mike snag. Before he's trying to get a spinner bait that's stuck in the tree. Not our spinner bait, but we're going to get it back. Add to the tackle collection. Yeah, get my hair. Get my hair. What is it? Spider? Oh, Those will get you. All right. <laughs> If I've, this tree knocks me out of my own boat, I'm going to be pissed. Surprise sinkhole. Surprise sinkhole. <laughs> what a wonderful tree. That bugger probably came right out and went right back under there. I didn't sting him. Come out.
Bat. Bat. It's all about finesse in this game, Mike. Take notes. What is that, a drum? Somebody lost their keg. Put a lot of beer in a 55 gallon drum. Um, in pretty much. About to be. Oh! <laughs> oh, we're good. That, that's like the only time that's ever worked out that smooth. Oh, that's about right where you were. See if I can't wiggle them out of there. One of us better hook that. A lot of nice timber around that dock. I think it should be full of slaunch bass. <laughs> Spend 25 minutes casting at the same dock. Best way to do it, right? Maybe we gotta move backwards and get at it from a different angle. See, if he sees all the baits coming the same angle, he's gonna get he's gonna get weary. Throw them at a different angle. That'll make the difference, right? Just when uh, just when Corey said he was getting going to be skunked, he uh, finally caught a fish. Touch the boat! Touch the boat! <laughs> oh. Get your hand on a slip, it counts. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, <laughs> oh they're here. Don't you dare cut my line, boy. <laughs> you ice fish this lake, Corey? Um, sometimes, yeah. I'm going to have to try and ice fish it at night this year. Got him. Yep. Yep. Woohoo! Acro bass. Oh, oh, get the net, get the net. I'm kidding. Really? I think it's really? <laughs> <laughs> a real good look at them. They do look a lot bigger when they get like, like perfectly broadside. Yeah. He looked like he was probably at least, at least three pounds. I love when they hit they hit your worm all the way up your hook too. That's my favorite. Okay, that's two fish in like two minutes. Good thing I left the Kelsey, and I kind of forgot the camera was even rolling. I love this rig for large mouth. It doesn't work very good for a small mouth unless they're like three pounders. They just don't get they don't get enough of the worm in their mouth to get to the hook. Windblown shore, what did I tell you, Mikey? Putting her on the trailer. Mike's gotta go to work. Me and uh, Corey are gonna go get some lunch and then try a uh, try a different lake. Cause this one kinda kinda booty. Go ahead and send her. <laughs> Quick little uh, health meal here. Delicious Subway sandwich. And then we sadly have to say goodbye to Marquette Adventures. Check out his channel. We'll put the link in the description. Give him a subscribe. And then uh, we are going back out to another lake that we've never fished for open water bass. We'll put the hammer down on bass bluegill fishing in the winter. So hopefully we can catch some. I'm picking the lake this time, not, not leaving it up to this guy. It wasn't good. At Hunters for Life, it is our mission to make the great outdoors accessible to anyone and everyone, regardless of age, limitation, or disability, one partner at a time. Our great partners include Threads and Ink, Huron Mountain Rod Company, made right here in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, Mud Buddy Motors, based out of Utah, our good friend Nick over at Superior Outfitters, also a dealer for Huron Mountain Rods, Brian McCarter with Nemesis Baits, Light Dreamers, Custom Pike and Musky Baits, based out of Chicago, shipped worldwide. And last but not least, our good buddy, Adam Carpenter, host of the one and only Outdoor Show. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. And as always, happy adventures.